Hey guys, welcome to the show. I'm Josh. I'm Billy. And I'm Ashley. And we have a very special episode for you today. We got Mr. Ryan Black from Farmer Wants a Wife. That's right. What's going on, Ryan? How you doing, brother? Hey, I'm doing good. It's good to uh, be here with you guys. Definitely. I enjoyed every review you guys have done um, on Farmer Wants a Wife. It's really good. We're, we're so happy to have you on the show here today to answer some questions for us. Yes. <laughs> That's Bill's teeth. We got some hard-hitting questions, though. We'll see. <laughs> All right, so it's it's been a while. How are you doing, first and foremost? Oh, I'm doing good. I uh, definitely found a lot of peace. There was a lot of um, character development in the show, um, internal growth. Um, I, I like to say that I grew so much in that six-week segment, probably more than I have in a decade, just on learning about women. I think that... Um, Billy has said that, you know, you learn a lot about women when you put all those ladies in the house at one time and you're trying to date and you and they all have their certain ticks and what makes them them. So you try to connect with them and you, you have to, you know, you have to, I don't know, like have different faces based on the, the lady that you're talking to in that moment. So you learn a lot about yourself and you become uh, more well-rounded, I think. That's a lot with six different women at the same time <laughs> or yeah, five, five is it five yeah five all at the same time <laughs> we started with eight and then the day that we met them we had to eliminate three well yeah well speaking of that man so i mean yeah you guys had that speed round you know at the very beginning where you're talking to all the women i mean what is it you know when you're walking into this scenario with all these women I mean, what's i mean for you as a dude what's what's the first thing you notice about a woman you know when you walk in there and you're talking with them i mean what what is it that catches your attention well, it's 10 minutes, so you're already freaking out. The cameras are there. You've never been on camera like this, so you're not comfortable with everything. So you really just look at physical attributes because when you're talking, your mind is so – it's in all other places. So, you know, um, there was a funny little part where I told this girl, I was like, you know, you have really nice eyes. And she's like, thanks. Oh, I said you have brown eyes, something like that. <laughs> yeah. It was just so dull. <laughs> <laughs> generic <laughs> i have eyes thank you <laughs> can, can you speak to the timeline to show like how long has it been since you guys start filming and then can you speak to the timeline of, of when it occurred how long did it last and things like that yeah so we started filming um the first week of october and we finished right there at the week of thanksgiving so it's, it was about six weeks of filming um and of course, they added in March. So some maybe five months had passed. We had about forty-five days of quiet time, and then they started prepping for the release of the first uh, commercial. And then that's when we started having to get ready for press events. Um, no, those things. I mean, you, you guys work hard, man. You, I mean, you all got you're all ranchers. You all got a ranch to run. So I mean, I mean, how did this work with that? As far as like having all these women on the ranch with you, and you know the day to day operations. I mean, were you guys still working full time, or were these women actually working full time with you? Was it a lot of downtime? How'd that work? No, well, because since we were in a contract, you know, I start a lot of colts. I couldn't ride it uh, nowhere near as many horses, or anything, because they didn't want any injuries. Because I was a character, you know, I had signed up for the show. So I had to bring in a lot of ranch hands. Um, they would send people out to the feed store for me, you know, wash your truck. You know, you were so, everything was taken care of, and that's not normal for us. Right. You know, and I guess it's, uh, you know, they're, they're offering it to us, but it takes away in some of our, like, normal normalcy or whatever, you know? Yeah. And, um, and the girls were the same thing. Like, the girls were here, and... The whole show was about, you know, a girl moving to the farm um, and would they be open to living at the farm? But they make it really they try to make it really gritty where the girls weren't able to go to the spa and go get the nails done and all those things. And those girls, yeah, obviously they're from the city, so they were used to that. So it's really like a crash course for them as well. Do they like what are they doing with their time during the day? Because we, we only saw a couple little snippets of them like helping you guys out on the farm. But like. Right. What are they doing the rest of the day? <laughs> um, I mean, they all bonded pretty well. They all seemed like pretty good friends, but like, is that all they were yeah, doing? They, <laughs> they would keep us separate for the most part. So they keep everything on camera. Um, so we were filming a lot of times throughout the day. So it was just a lot of people here, probably 50 people at the ranch um, through the process. Oh, wow. So the girls were just having conversations, but there would be one day a week where we'd have just downtime where we didn't have to film and we would prepare for the next day, which was traveling. And so I went to the Walmart. I got all the girls some yoga mats and some stuff with yoga. I had no idea what I was buying. 
<laughs> I just gave it all to them. And um, so they set the yoga mats up in this like foyer area. So I went outside one morning and I lit my fire and I had some coffee. And they sing me out there and they were doing yoga here and they sing me out there and they grabbed all their mats and they came to the fire pit. And I was like, <laughs> oh, oh man. <laughs> You were trying yeah. to get some alone time. <laughs> <laughs> Can you take us to um, through your journey to how you became on this show? Like, did they reach out to you? Did you have to apply for something? So they reached out. Um, well, my buddy, a good friend of mine, he did Joe Millionaire. Um, he was his name is Kurt, and we've been friends for a couple years before that. So, and this with the same production team, and they had reached out to him. Was like, do you have any farmer friends? And of course, him and I are really good buddies. So. And then I guess they just got my social media reached out. But the thing is, they reached out to me in April, but they don't confirm it until we start filming in October, maybe around the early September. Oh, wow. wow. That's a short yeah, timeline. So much, so much pressure you have to to get ready for the show. And they do keep you alone and, and kind of tell you, we'll give you, you know, so you can you anticipate it. But the 100 percent, you know, came shortly before filming. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Cause I can imagine it's, you know, I mean, logistically, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it takes a lot of time for you guys to prep for this, right? Especially trying, like you said, you got to get ranch hands to help out, take care of the farm, which I'm, I'm assuming they kind of helped took care of that for you. But, but yeah. still a month didn't seem like a lot of time to get everything ready. No, it's not. It's not a lot of time. And I was building my, my house here because I only had it set up for myself, but I have built some other rooms, but I just had them framed. So I, and I build houses. So I had to bring everybody here, rush, 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 let's get this done. And it was just, you know, it was so complicated, but it, I put a lot of work in to make sure it was comfortable for the girls. Um, yeah, yeah, it was a lot. Yeah. Yeah, that's good, man. Well, so, and, you know, and, and, you know, I've said this many times on our shows, like out of all the farmers, man, when it seemed like somebody was trying to make the girls comfortable, it was you, right? You were, I mean, because you're out of the bat, you're like, hey, man, these are big city girls, you know, so I got to give them a little bit of that taste as well. So you were taking them out to like wineries, out to fancy restaurants yeah. and all that. So, you know, just kind of, I guess, talk to, talk about that a little bit, man, because I mean, I, I appreciated how you did that and how you took that in consideration when it seemed like maybe some other guys didn't so much, right? Right. Yeah, because I was telling them that, you know, my ranch is only 25 minutes outside of Charlotte. And I said, my life is not that remote. So I wanted the girls to know, like, your jobs and what you do for a living, you can uh, transfer here because it's a big city here. Um, and you kind of get best of both worlds because you can be in the city, you can escape the city, you know. And I thought that that, was, that played a major factor and it would help play a major factor in the girls' decisions. Um, so, you know, I was really pushing that agenda. And as far as when you, you know, you take a girl out, there was one comment um, in the reviews on, on Facebook where this lady was like, I just don't like him because something's off. He dresses nice to take a girl out on a date. It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you want him to do? You, you gotta know? wear your right. sweatpants, right. man. <laughs> right. I was like, you know, and, and I just said, if that's an issue, you should not watch TV. At all. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or go too, on dates. Right, yeah, too no much kidding. style, Ryan. Too much style for some people, too, I guess. Too much. He does not like it. Um, but the girls appreciated it. And the only thing is that first date with Haley, it was the first day filming here. And that one kind of did an injustice because as we moved on, I got to know them. So I was able to organize the date that suited their personality. Mm. Oh, yeah. No, that's, that that, sense, yeah, that's yeah. a point. And, and that really, I think going forward, the show should probably back that first date up a week to give you really give you time to because they do ask me, they're like, so what did you like? What would you like to do for this date? And I'll tell them like this. This is her girl here. She loves uh, martinis. Let's, let's do, uh, you know, a restaurant. And I found that restaurant on the lake. And I was like, this is the spot we can dress up because she was really I mean, you see in the last episode, she had a oh, yeah. coat on. Mm -hmm. You know, Sarah with an H. So, well, that was a nice date, too. You got yeah, girls dressed to the nines. Yeah. And, and Sarah's dress, yeah, looked oh, yeah. pretty good. Yeah, they yeah, really liked yeah, that, that dress. <laughs> I'm sure you did, too. <laughs> it didn't make it easy for me. Right, right, right. <laughs> she knew what she was doing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. And then the, the other weird thing is the good night. So the, every night, like the good night moments, it's just so complicated because respectfully, five girls here, you want to say good night to each one, and they all, you know, I really enjoyed my date today, and then it just gets hard, because <laughs> as, as a gentleman, you know, you'll give, you'll give a hug, you'll give a good night kiss, or what have you, but then when you multiply that, 
you, you just get lost in trying to figure out how to do it properly. And I don't know. It's tough. Yeah, and I can imagine. Well, so speaking about being a gentleman, you know, I, I know you got you you caught a bad break a lot of times in this show, man. They wanted to kind of portray you as Ryan the Playboy. Oh, he's kissing all these different women, and, you know. And I've always been like, hey, that's part of dating, man. You got to, I mean, you got to kiss the girl to find out if you're even compatible that way, right? So, so tell us a little bit about that, man. Because I know I know they try to portray you as kind of a Playboy light, but in reality, I don't think that's the case at all. And, and we, and you know, and even your mama, the way your mama was talking, I mean, I, you could tell yeah. she raised her boy right, you know. So yeah, let, right. let us know and a little about that. we love your mom. Oh, yeah, do your we mom's love awesome. Your mom. Great like. seeing Betty on the show. <laughs> Big highlight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, people are saying, can we just get Betty for all of this? <laughs> <laughs> she should have been there for the whole thing. Honestly, when it came to the kissing, the kissing was, for the most part, on camera. And behind the scenes and off camera, it was just a lot of um, connecting, talking, hanging out. The girls were just, you know, it, it wasn't as intense. I guess that... Um, they use that kissing part to bring about an audience and because it wasn't nowhere near as much kissing as you would see in your normal dating shows. Um, but it right. was true. I mean, there you was know, that was one kiss that well, you, at the rodeo, right? Where yeah, like you thought you were off camera. <laughs> but... that was all. <laughs> oh, that one was supposed to be off camera. Was... <laughs> yes. I imagine they're pretty that sneaky on the show. To be off camera, but it ended up not, um, it ended up not being, uh, it ended up being on camera. Yeah, they got you, man. <laughs> yeah. And um, and that's why I thought, I was like, no, this is all, because that was a request of mine. But, uh, you know, it's still, you're, you're still being filmed. Um, but I think ultimately, you know, they use that way, they use it to portray me that way, I think mainly for the audience, um, because ultimately that's not how I am. And people were missing the fact that you have five, um, well, five girls at one time and you really, it's, it's a crash course. So you really are trying to find a connection with one. And, you know, these girls, you know, the first three or four kisses they were asking for. Right. And I was like, what do I do? Because like that one good night kiss, Haley was like, are you going to keep talking? Or you keep talking? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, but they don't you know, show that of you, but they do for Alan. Like, I mean, Cassidy Joe was begging for the kiss, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I would look at the production and I'm like, you know, I, I I wasn't sure if we could get intimate or anything like that. And so that was the first one that kind of threw me off. And then Sarah Engel, Sarah H, she was like, can we, um, can we not pull you aside to talk for a minute? And so that's when we walked down the hill and I set the plate down. And as soon as I walked over there to her, she just starts kissing me. And I was like, you want to talk? Or you <laughs> <laughs> so everybody was like, he's kissing everybody. And so for me, in that actual situation, do I tell her no? And and that's just not who I am as a person in, in this situation. So, and also, you know, you see that in, in the other farm. He's like, no. But for me, I just I just kind of roll with it. I mean, again, it's so un unnatural. So you just, you make a lot of instant decisions that you can't really decide upon like with, with time and everything yeah i mean that makes sense too because i mean if you're trying to push her away and tell her no then that's giving her you know to her that's a bad sign when in, yeah. you, in reality you just be like doing it because you weren't sure if it's appropriate or not and you definitely don't right. want to give them that bad vibe you know said so I, I i get it man right and then when it's when there's so much pressure you know i i believe and and value good kisses like they have to be good oh yeah because that's what brings them back you know so i was like it was a little awkward because the camera's here and she wanted to kiss that first date. And, you know, I'm like, damn, I got to make this good. But I was really <laughs> awkward. You can't you just know. yell cut right. and right. then redo right. it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. whose idea was it to put the, the both Sarahs with you in the hot tub? Was that your idea? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that was a good one, man. That was, that was good. <laughs> yeah, You're living out some know. guy's fantasies <laughs> here. Right. Right now, so. Listen, you guys have to remember, my producer, he was from ATL. Right, and right. I was like... That hot tub scene, yeah, let, let's get a hot tub. And uh, <laughs> You mean you don't just have that hot tub on your farm? No. No? Yeah, no, it wasn't just sitting here, you know. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, what is your experience with love shows? Do you watch other love shows? And did you watch the Australian version prior to this to kind of get prepped for it? You know, I have been in, uh, offered to be on Married at First Sight, which I kind of went through the process and I got out uh, with the, within the top 10 guys left. And Love is Blind as well called. But with this particular show, I was able to do it here at my farm and remain who I was as a person. Whereas a lot of the other dating shows, you go to a resort and you're just a, a cast member. Where here I was able to be who I am. And so the girls were able to look at my life directly 
instead of looking at me on in a resort and then trying to figure out who I was. In real and I think yeah, that's, that's awesome, what man. makes this show like very wholesome yeah. and why it attracts a certain crowd because it's more realistic in some level. It's not like The Bachelor where you're coming from all these other places. You're going on these big extravagant dates that you would never go on if you were dating in real life. And right. then it's over and you're supposed to just right when it, blend each other's lives somehow. And like I said, it gives you the opportunity to be you and not, you know, because you watch some of these love shows. Like I said, you don't know if that's that real person you're seeing and that's how they actually act. You know, are they just acting like this because they're in this, you know, big group of people and, you know, yeah. so they're just trying to, you know, throw the drama factor out there or what. So, yeah, yeah it's definitely, you know pretty cool to see you in your home environment you know and kind of just react in a normal life so yeah but that definitely made them an anomaly and they stuck out or stick out because of that fe uh, feature alone so you don't have to say any names but do you think mm. there were any women there for their 15 minutes of fame uh, oh th that was the <laughs> biggest disconnect <laughs> <laughs> You can say names if you want. <laughs> when you talk to producers and you see their their uh, their agendas and maybe motives, and you start to you you think that they're all here for just the fame, because there's that big reality of do you do I really find love with a girl who is so established in the city? Um, yeah. You know, in a month or six week time, like is it is it really going to be real? Is it really going to stick? Is it going to be genuine? Um, because you know, I it, it mean, that's that big, you know, fact right there that. And that was something that frustrated us as viewers. Like we're watching this and, you know, there's certain women are like, I don't know, like, you know, maybe we can move here. Maybe we can move there. And I think Hunter right. said it. He's like, this isn't farmer. Well, find sell us far, yeah, find, find a girl, sell us farm, move exactly. away, right? It, it is about you ladies deciding if you, you know, can live on a farm with us and actually live this lifestyle, right? right. So, so, I mean, we were frustrated as viewers to see that these women were coming on there and, and hesitant about doing this. And and it's one thing to be hesitant about that because the connection's not strong enough where they actually haven't found love. But it's like, hey, yeah, I really do like you. I do see a future with you, but I just don't know if I see it here. Yeah, and it's like, why did you come on the show exactly. if, you know, if you're not open to that? And it's, it's in all of our minds. And that's kind of what really kind of kept me back a lot because you open up, like when I came in, my heart was completely open and I tell people like you can't look for love, you have to be open to it. Because when you look for it sometimes you you disregard a lot of things that you probably should see. But when you're open to it, it kinda of becomes more natural. So when I entered the process, I was extremely open. But once I seen it, like day one, um, I went back guarded. You know, and I think that was rightfully so, um, in my opinion. Just just so I could be be true to myself, I kinda of just had to back up and really look at this and for what it was. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, when we talk about this, I mean, I'll, I'll say a name because, you know, we said on the last one, you know. <laughs> of course, the, Billy the, will the, say a name. The way, the way things went down with Sarah H., right, and the way they portrayed it, it was like at first, I mean, because in the first, you know, several episodes, man, it seems like y'all were super into each other. And then there at the end, when she's, like, talking with her family, she made it sound like she was pretty much completely out. And then when she, you know, pulled you aside and talked to you out in front of her house, it wasn't even like, hey, come on in, let's have a drink. It was like, ah, we're just going to sit here on the porch and, you know, and, uh, and you know, peace out. You know, let's say, uh, hey, it was good to get to know you, but uh, this just ain't going to work. It's almost you know? like so. she could have just pulled up in, like, a car, rolled down the window and be like, bye. <laughs> right, yeah. right, right, right. Can, you, can you walk us through that one? Because right. you guys seem to prior to that have a strong connection and then yeah. just hit a brick wall and, and suddenly ended. So that happened... And we, we did have a strong connection. It was more of an, like an intimate kind of connection. But I think a lot of that brick wall had to do with my frustration with Haley's absence. Um, and that was happening before going to see Haley, before the New York scene and all of that. Um, I think that that was the moment that her and I kind of hit a, hit a spot. And then funny thing is, I felt it in a hug. She gave me a hug, and I was like, "Yeah, this we're, we're done." Mm. Like when you when you and, met in New York, when she the greet no, hug no, no. weeks before even going to the home visit, mm. I could I could feel the the disconnect, and I think it played a lot of, into the fact that she seen my frustration with Haley's absence. So she was like, "If that's if that's your girl kind of thing, then you know why right, am I right, here? why am I here anymore?" And that's a bummer too, because that's that seemed to be your mom's favorite. Uh person that she met initially yeah because my mom liked her the, the way she kind of carried herself and her poise um and we had a good connection as far as you know that was concerned but the you know she's extremely established in her career and so that reality and again after you know two weeks these girls start to realize that this wasn't a vacation <laughs> <laughs> 
Man. You know, they were excited. <laughs> I mean, they were playing with the horses and the puppies, but then they started missing home. Mm. And yeah. right, I guess rightfully so. Yeah. You know. Now, and can you walk us through the Haley thing? Because as a viewer, it seemed a little awkward where you cut her off kind of early, but then later on, you, you kind of go back to her. And we were kind of left a little confused with that. So can you clarify that? Th that was that was a lot of, I guess, filming that had that went along with that to, to you know, and oh, let's see. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> um, the moment of letting Haley go, I instantly regretted it. Um, or I wouldn't say regret. I, I, it wasn't the right decision. Let me say that. You know, I knew that instantly. And as far as moving forward, I think that Haley's emotional side, and you know, she she had that feminine feature that was really strong. I think that was pulling a lot of, um, I thought that it was really complicated for the process at first because it was such a like dog eat dog. It felt like process where it's just, you know, I'm, I'm gonna hang out with him. I'm gonna hang out with him. Like get time with him and spend time with her. And I think Haley's, you know, from my perspective at that point, I was feeling like she was really get, um, gonna find herself in a tough spot. And I thought that maybe the release of, of her would do her better then, um, at that point instead of later. And I felt like it would be harder if it didn't work out for her as the process went on. And honestly, I was, the biggest thing I was trying to do was be a, a really good gentleman to each one and kind of look at who, what I thought of the, uh, their personalities and respect it because, you know, and that, that played a lot into it. But ultimately, I think that Haley's um, feminine and, and genuine side and her emotions and all those things really brought out um certain aspects of myself but a relationship like that it takes time and i think that w if it wasn't for this situation you we would have gotten to know each other and let that grow you know yeah yeah all right let's talk about sarah v because she was with you the whole time right is she just too tall for you or yeah, what no, 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 that girl's crazy. yeah that girl's tall man no i actually prefer tall women it's so funny yeah <laughs> Um, I have no issue with her being taller than me. Um, and she would wear her heels, and she would ask me, "Like, are you okay with wearing heels?" I'm like, "No, you know, stretch your legs." That's not right, right. Uh, <laughs> you know, because I, I like that, so I'm gonna be checking you out anyway. Right. Uh, but I think ultimately, Sarah was really cool. Um, but through the process, she was really t uh, talking to me about a lot of things and kind of coaching me. There was incidents off camera where Haley kind of had a moment. And Sarah was like, I think you should go fix that um, because if you don't, it's not going to work out good as far as moving forward. And there would be another moment. And Sarah was always hanging out with me in my cigar lounge. And she would just talk me through the process. So I think that we really just had that, that bond. Um, but I didn't see it becoming romantic, even though I was really trying. Um, you know, I was really trying because I knew in my mind, I was like, this is a good woman. Um but I just didn't know if there was a relationship that could have lasted mm. in that, you know. We yeah, kind of saw that, too, with, like, the – almost like she was, like, a love coach to you, right? Because, like, you know, with the yeah. whole, you know, do you like me, check yes or no on right. the, the basketball kind of thing. It's like she really was trying to guide you into these, like, situations. Yeah, yeah I, I think she's in a long, wrong line of work, man. I think she's got a, a bright future <laughs> as a relationship coach, man. That's, that's I mean, just watching this show is like, man, this woman needs to, needs to switch her, uh, you know, switch jobs and uh, start her own little uh, relationship business. Yeah, because she's really logical. For, and for a woman, she um, she thinks with her mind more than just her emotions. I mean, she just does. And um, and I think that has a lot to do with, like, her, her upbringing. She, you know, played sports. And so – She's she's on your side, like she told me. She's like, look, I'm I'm here to support you, and um, but again, that I was just trying to respect the fact. It's, I didn't want to just pick her just to pick her, you know. And so I think that played a lot into it. But she's a great person, really. Yeah, she, she definitely seemed like it, man. I mean, I mean, overall, man, I mean, you seem oh, like yeah. you seem like you just had a good cast of girls all together. I mean, all you guys did for the most part, you know. It seemed like yeah. you know you had had a really good you know good group of girls, and most of them were sweethearts, and uh, you know. So I can imagine just how hard it was, man, just trying to narrow that stuff down. It was. It was really hard. And I didn't really think it was going to be that complicated. And I told the production, I said, you guys didn't warn me about this. <laughs> <laughs> the complication. <laughs> like, I don't know what to do. Yeah, initially, it seemed like you guys had a hard time, like, getting rid of some people there. And there were some times you, you guys didn't get rid of anyone. 
Yeah. You know, and I was after like watching the reviews that you guys make, you know, other other uh, YouTubers and whatnot. I was thinking maybe they should make us all delete or uh, remove someone at the same time mm-hmm. because it it did throw a lot of like are they sending someone home are they not and it was all over the place when i watched it we saw one of when you guys all got together you know it's like who'd you get rid of and then i think it was alan he's like you guys got rid of people <laughs> <laughs> well in that yeah. thing too man i mean i mean so the show portrayed you guys as all i mean the few get-togethers y'all had and, and you know maybe and maybe there should have been more i don't know you know maybe you think there should have been more get-togethers too i want to ask you about that but it made it seem like you guys are pretty close. I mean, were you guys like talking through the process and like kind of giving each other advice on the different women that you saw them with? Like, hey, man, I, you know, this girl right here, I don't, I don't, I don't really see you guys connecting her. We didn't get to do that for the first like four four weeks um, because they wanted us to talk on camera. So we would only get to talk when we would meet up. Mm. Um, and we would only and, like they would film it and then they would cut it because they wanted all of the conversation that we had to have to be on camera. Um and that was a little complicated for us because it was making us every time the cameras start rolling, you aren't as natural as you would be. Right. And and that was just and that was every time. So we were all struggling on camera versus if they would have just maybe set cameras to the side, removed the mm. people, and just gave us like into the background. To start rolling. Yeah. Yeah, we saw that with Alan a little bit, I think, during this. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, especially in the beginning, man. He was having a tough time. Because I mean, he even showed the clips the producer was talking to him, like, hey, you know, you all right? You know, you, you could tell he was super uncomfortable with a lot of it, you know, and, and rightfully so, right? I mean You know, we all were but we were all trying. I think Landon, regardless of what he says, that that kid had some skills when it came to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Yeah, no, yeah, he he he, he, he he did seem relatively comfortable, I think, you know, in comparison to some, you know, some of the rest of you guys. But but I mean, again, I, I thought you were, you know, for the most part, you yeah. played it pretty well too. You know, you seemed pretty comfortable yeah. you know, in in your skin during the filming as well. So yeah, and I try to, you know, I would tell the girls I'm about to say a lot to say a little, um, because I try to just be a man of a few words when it comes to a lot of it. Because the more I talk, the more I would ruin it or mess up something. <laughs> We're, we're all like that, men and women. <laughs> yeah. So is there yeah. any plans for a reunion episode? We saw that season two looks like it's going forward. Is there any plans for a reunion? If not, can you touch up on uh, where everyone's at these days, especially yourself? Are you with Haley? Uh, well, the girls and the guys, they have released their um, relationship status on their social medias. Um, I definitely wanted to make sure that they all released their own, you know, uh, way of expressing it without stepping in there and expressing it prior to to them. So you can definitely check out their our Instagrams and stuff. But um no, I think I think that um I don't think we're gonna do a reunion because we haven't been told that yet. We also do want to do one. So um I guess we'll just see but it may happen since they did get renewed for season two season two, but we haven't um been informed that and also um we all did kind of come out and let let everyone know where we stand. I'm not with Haley. Um, I just think that, you know, she she posted a live or or or, a, or like a TikTok or something where during that elimination or that final um, scene, her and I talked for like 45 minutes. And as you can expect, that 45 minutes, a lot of it was, you know, myself trying to talk um, her and I through it all. But ultimately, she still needed more time, which was kind of the same thing she told me in New York. So I just kind of backed up a little bit, you know, and, um, it, you know, we, we kind of got where we got to, um, which is not together, basically, um, as time went on. All right. So I, I got a question for you, man. And one of our viewers kind of asked me this, and, uh, you know, and I'm going to phrase it a little different than they asked it, but, you know, now that you've been through this process, man, like, you know, you know, having to choose the different women, kind of, you know, what, you know, what thought process you use to choose and all that. If you could go back now prior to filming this and give yourself advice on how to handle this whole scenario, you know, this whole experience, you know, what advice would you give yourself, you know, that, that, uh, you know, stuff that you didn't know back then that now that you know, you're like, wow, I wish I'd have done it this way. You know, I would not let myself be influenced. I would definitely say that because there was so, um, during the, during the initial first day, um, you pick five women. Um, I wouldn't, let myself be influenced because I'm, I have a pretty decent judge of character and it, it, it kind of goes out the window. Um, and I wouldn't let that happen again. Um, and I would tell someone, you know, I would tell someone that just know that when you're filming that the whole world is going to be watching 
because that's one of the things that I we didn't really consider. Because when you're filming, you know it's a dating show, but you don't really understand the scale and how big it's going to get. And when you become, when you get used to the cameras because they're there every day, you start to for, still forget that it's going to be a show. And um, I would definitely tell someone to remember that because that, because looking back now, like even Alan, he called me about some of the things, and he was like, "Man, I wish I'd." Have, you know, tune into that girl right then and there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's that's hard when you're doing these reality shows is that you never know how they're going to portray you, like, as yeah. you're filming it. And, and they can take one thing that you say and insert into some scene that makes you look, like, completely out of context from what it actually was. Yes, 100%. Yeah, man. So, uh, so, so, what's going on, man? You got, uh, you got anything uh, cooking, man? As far as any future opportunities? Yeah. So, there's definitely plans, um, you know, to move forward. And if it, if it's filming and related to like the farming lifestyle, I think that that's my, that's who I am, and that's my image. So, I would like it to stay in that realm. But you know, ultimately, we're here to grow in our careers and our futures. And if it happens, you know, it, it happens. Yeah, that's good, man. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's good to hear that, you know, you're in a good place. It sounds like you got some good stuff going for you. That's awesome. You know, and when it comes to meeting someone, you know, I was really um, focused on doing that before the show was released because, you know, when you meet someone after the show, it's, it becomes even more complicated to know if they're genuine. Um, and, and and that definitely played a, a factor in getting to know someone prior to the show for for both prior to the show releasing the first episode. Do you get recognized a lot when you go out in town? Everywhere I go. <laughs> it, it's cool. It's it's cool because there's this little kid and I was in Lowe's and I had a curved bib on. Like I won't um a curved hat. I won't wear my cowboy hat a lot because obviously it's easy to recognize me. So I just had my hat on I was working I was in Lowe's and I was walking down the aisle and I just hear this kid screaming like a hundred yards away it felt like he was like, Ryan! <laughs> like eight, he's like eight or nine years old, and he has his backpack on. His parents are standing down there, and they're like, what is it? And he's like, it's Ryan. And he just takes off running through those. <laughs> and I turn around, and I'm standing there, and everybody, it was in the front, so everybody is like, who is this guy? And then everybody's like, oh, my God, it's him. I was like, damn. <laughs> uh, oh, man. You got the paparazzi on you. <laughs> Yeah. I've got these fastball questions. All right. So I'm going to queue up the questions. They're just going to be like, you got to make a choice. You got to be rapid fire. Got it? Okay. Lots of go. pressure. <laughs> Look, you've been on TV. Like, you've done this. You can do this. <laughs> yes. All right. So, talking tacos. Hard shell versus shot, soft shell. Hard shell. All right. I'm sure. Beer. Bud Light versus any other beer will do. <laughs> you, 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 ain't gonna... <laughs> you don't have to answer. She, she's just messing with you on that one. Uh, it's just, yeah, I had I'm, to fit it in there. You know, you know, good, man. I like you. Right. Oh, yeah. When it comes to cuddling, big spoon versus little spoon. Well, I don't like to cuddle. So oh. I mean, oh. <laughs> yes. I would be big spoon, but I guess, but I do not like cuddling. But when it's time to sleep, it's like, all right, girl, you got to screw on over there. Get my, get my space. <laughs> let me stretch it. out. <laughs> I get it. I get it. All right, movies, action versus comedy. Comedy, but really romance comedy. Uh, rom com. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. I was going to ask rom com, but That's someone right. didn't That's want right. that. <laughs> yeah. If you think about like my character or who I am, rom com is my speed. There, there you, you go. go, man. All right. Yep. All right, Mexican versus Italian. We're talking food here, not <laughs> women. Food, not women. <laughs> both. Both, yeah, yeah. Or both. Yeah. All right. All yeah. right. Italian. Love Italian food. I used to want to be a chef. So I used to want to, um, uh, all of the food I would like learn to cook was Italian based. All right. You cook a lot? Yes. Oh, well, I used to cook a lot, but now not as much, but um, I have the skill set. That, that's Certain nice. set of skills. That's right. <laughs> I know someone who doesn't, so, you know. <laughs> Just saying. All right. Dogs versus cats. Cats. No, I like dogs. I hate cats, but I have barn cats and they do a good job here. So, nice. so cats for work, dogs for love. Yes. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Friendship. <laughs> yeah. Basketball versus football. Uh, football, but I don't like sports. You don't well, like sports. You don't like sports. All right, but you we, say we football. Probably, you ain't got this time, is I what mean. did it for Sarah V. Shot the <laughs> and he's like, you gotta go. <laughs> There's a bit disconnect for Sarah V and I because she would be watching the game here, and you know, I just don't watch sports. I play football, but I'm just not big in sports. Uh, you know, I don't know why. Um. Boxers or briefs? Uh, commando. Commando. 
<laughs> All right, last one. Yeah. Surf or ski? Ski. All right. Nice. You like to ski. More of a cold yeah. weather guy, Ryan? Um, I, I don't mind the cold. I like the cold um, because I like to wear my sweaters and my coats and stuff. All right. Um, yeah, when it gets hot, because I work outside with my horses a lot. When it's hot, it's hot. Oh, yeah, I bet. Yeah. Now, yeah. speaking of your your attire, I noticed with your style, like if when you have all all you farmers together, everyone's shirts uh-huh. are tucked in, but yours is never tucked in. No. <laughs> that's the Ryan brand. That's his style. That's right, man. Yeah, I um, I, that's just part of my swag. Like, and I don't tuck my shirts in. I'll tuck it in every once in a while. Like, if I'm, I like I say, I will tuck it in every once in a while if I'm going to a school to talk to kids. You know, um, if I'm in a suit or something, I'll tuck. But when it comes to just my normal swag, no, no. I don't really <laughs> yeah. Like those big buckles that you wear when every time you sit down, they hurt your stomach. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. No. So yeah, no, I, 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 don't, I don't blame comfort. you, man. I don't blame you. You dress yeah. for comfort with some style yeah, and, added in. And it, it fits my, like in the cowboy world, when I'm out there competing, when I'm, when I get to places, you know, everyone knows me as the guy, like if I tuck my shirt in, they'll think something's wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> we noticed, I noticed anyway. All right. That's all I got for this. Yeah, speed speed round's round over. Well, hey brother. Hey man, uh, we greatly appreciate you taking the time to do this with, this yeah. with us, man. This, this was awesome, man. It was fun. Uh, it's good to get to joke and laugh with you and just kind of yeah. hear how life's going for you, man. And I mean, I'm glad it's going yeah. well, man. So like everything's going good. So that's great. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. That was our interview with Ryan Black. I mean, what an awesome dude, man. That good was a, time. Yeah. That was a great conversation. Ryan, hey man, we appreciate everything you did coming out here and talking to us, man. And, uh, and it was awesome. But hey, uh, as always, you know, we love doing for these, doing this for you guys. And uh, until next time, we will check you at our next review. See ya. See ya. Called Cowboy Looking for Love. Yeah, because you guys are farm. I mean, the only one who's semi farmer, I guess, is Landon, right? He's got some farm stuff, yeah. but for the most part, you guys are ranchers. Not- Alan's a trucker, hunter, ranches. Um, I raise horses. I have 26 horses. But Landon is closest to farming um, as we all got to. Got, yeah. You know. Cowboy looking for love. It, it was it was sexy. It, mm. You know, like say. Oh that. yeah, that's perfect, man. So you know, the farmer wants wife. Well, especially yeah. when the show ends where no farmers got a wife. You know? <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a, yeah, it was like it was, was like, like hey, let's, let's keep dating. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I definitely thought that that would be a part of it, but they told us early on, like you guys don't have to get married. Oh yeah, yeah. Billy hit it on the head. I think all you guys did. It. So we went into that knowing that, like, say, what's the the end game? Doesn't have to be much. Yeah. Right. You know, guys on the Facebook group, he said, I am tired of everyone calling Ryan a player. He said, <laughs> yeah, you know, he just pointed out, he said, every one of these guys accepted to date multiple girls at one time. Yep. Yeah. So do they not, he said, they didn't, he said, they may not, may not be as good at playing the game. <laughs> play exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. And, and that's, but that's what you get when you get. With Landon, you know, so that's the thing. I wanted to edit almost every episode, like our most remote farmer. <laughs> <laughs> he just needs to change his Instagram title to the remote, remote farmer. farmer. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, a lot of people didn't even know the difference between Hunter and Landon. I did. It was I, I initially. So like, hard like, with like the first three episodes, we kept trying to figure out the difference between the two. <laughs> and, and, you know, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We saw. Oh, Devon was. Like, oh, oh, dude. Oh, dude. Devon, so, she was my favorite, man, thing, out of all his girls. You, were you as impressed with the beer bottle as they as they well, were? The problem with the beer bottle thing is I missed it in, in real action. I was sitting there talking, and then I heard people hollering. And she was right in front of me, but... Oh, <laughs> man. What, what happened? Yeah, I missed that. I, I hate it, but I was impressed by that. I was like, damn, that's a cool girl. <laughs> yeah, no, but I'm, I'm, yeah, Devon was it for me, man. I was like, damn, Hunter, what are you doing, man? That's the girl right mm-hmm. there. Like, the one. But yeah. uh, he and, really wanted to keep her around. <laughs> yeah, Josh, Josh, Josh likes him. Cancer Jim. You know, this is TV. Yeah, yeah and it's got to be entertainment. You know. It's- yeah, I don't yeah, think we saw one sure. drunk person on your show. No, I was, I was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, well, dude, one of those um Cassie Joe says, and that's when I realized that this, you know my my image. But she was like, I've seen Ryan and Sarah kissing for an hour. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yep. I was like, are you saying we, we, her and I, Sarah and I danced one song. We kissed for like two or three minutes. That was it, you know. And, well, two and or three minutes like, can be perceived as an hour, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Especially to <laughs> someone like Cassidy <laughs> Joe. Right. Cassidy Joe was saying in one episode, this is why we didn't get put on Ryan's farm because that guy likes to kiss. 
But then she was complaining about the back kiss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and then Alan gave her that mercy kiss, and she made a huge deal out of it. You know, oh, like, oh my yeah. gosh, he kissed me. It's like, hey, he gave you a little peck because you like wouldn't shut up <laughs> yeah. about it. You know, <laughs> girl, actually, Cassie is awesome. Um, I think she really uh, delivered to what the show needed. Cassie Joe, she held her own. She definitely bought the drama. She kind of. She was poking at Alan, too. She mm-hmm. was, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. You know, she didn't play. And I was thinking she would be good for him. I kind of told him, I was like, oh, yeah. man, you know, Cassidy really, she might be good for you because she was like, you haven't given me a compliment, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm not arguing with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a, like always been a Cassidy Joe fan. And the yeah. fact that she's like very pushy like that, I'm just like, you couldn't handle her. Like, there's no way he could handle that. <laughs> Well, I'd like to try, Ryan. You know? <laughs> oh, well, especially when she, you know, let them know, oh, I got a kiss, and they're all like, huh? And then, you know, then he's trying to try to explain that to each girl, you know. And then when uh, when uh, Kelsey pulled him aside, and then of course she got her kiss out of that afterward, right? So and that was a real kiss, <laughs> right? Right? Yeah, she got a real kiss. <laughs> it, I mean, Cassie, she did it, man. She she really did. And um, and I was I was like, I'm with Josh. I was definitely a big fan of Cassie Joe. I was telling him, I was like, dude, I think you should pick her because. She she brought out that fire, and she was definitely all about him. There you go. Right, right. Ryan's on board with me. Cassidy Joe. Go, I've been telling these jokers. Oh, <laughs> yeah. boy. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Yeah. I was really confused, Ryan, and I talked to him. We talk all the time, and I did not understand why he let Callie go. That was that was for the life of me. I was like, Landon, that girl was a good girl. She and needed to fly, spread her wings. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, telling her that you don't want to cage a bird that can fly. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, he always has those quips, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Landon always has some clever to say about stuff. I, mean, I do. Yeah. Yeah, she, she was, she was my pick for him, man. I, I was, she I was, was like, your damn. pick for you. And for, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That too. I was like, damn. I told my producer, I was like, listen, before you bring all the girls, I think you need let's take them shopping, get them to some Wranglers, take. Them right, yeah, yeah, exactly. And they're like, no, we're not going to do that. We want them, you know, to be uncomfortable in, in you know, the shop. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, these girls going to be ready to run out of here. I got to run around. Damn, you know, snakes everywhere. Oh, yeah, man. High grass and mud and horse shit. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> they're Gucci clothing, yeah. Yeah, I, I can believe when I saw them girls out there trying to work in that stuff. I was like, what the hell are they doing, That's man? reality TV, though. My producer and um, the co-producer, whatever, assistant, they both work on Survivor. And um, I was like, they were like, would you like to do that after? I was like, hell no, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, nah, I no, couldn't do that one either. So. I, I don't know how a lot of people do that, right? So Yeah, and that was a complication with Alan because he's a trucker. He hauls uh, cattle. He said, in that one dinner date, he was like, with all of them, he said, look, I'm on the road multiple times, mm-hmm. you know, a couple times a week. He yeah. said, so you guys have to take care of stuff. And, and so then at that point, I was like, so why don't you just pick Rebecca? That seemed to make yeah. the most sense. And she seemed the most yeah. comfortable with that. So And she's cool. Rebecca. Oh, she, she seemed like funny. man. During the selection process, there was eighty one girls and we only had one photo and like what they did for a living. That's it. And then their wow. age. That was That's it. not a lot like, to go video. off of. We couldn't hear them talking and the, the the pictures were shots that they had taken from their Instagram and they it was like further down. So there, some of the pictures were two, three years old. Mm. Oh wow. So that's all we had. And there was 81. And they were like, we need you to put these in order of your top 16. Rebecca was the only one with a cowboy hat on, turned sideways with a Starbucks cup. And, you know, she was drinking a coffee. That was the only image. And I was like, man, that girl seems down to earth just on that photo. So I said, look, Rebecca's in my top five. As we start moving, they start moving the girls around. And then Rebecca ended up being like number eight, number 10, somewhere in there. So then when I, when I, when I actually met her in person, I was like, why didn't y'all put that girl? <laughs> we talk all the time. She always gives me hell because one of my studs broke into the pasture and bred one of my mares. And then a week later, one of her studs broke into the pasture. So, you know, we just have that kind of like that common yeah. conversation. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, I mean, out of all the women on the show, I mean, she seemed definitely the one that, that, that got the lifestyle the most because she lives it, right? So, I mean, yeah, I, I, I thought, or out, you know, I thought as far as Alan's choices, she'd probably been his best choice. And I think I always said that, you know, but I mean, you yeah. know, granted the, you know, the distance thing of her having her business in California and all that would have been an issue, but, you know, there's ways to make things work, right? But you do have to have that yeah. connection, though. And maybe that was just missing. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know, you you just never know. It's, it's just kind of complicated, I guess. Yeah. Season two, Ryan, you got to tell them. Second oh, chance. I, I told them I'm staying as far as I wait. 
Yeah. They should bring uh, you guys in, though, like not not on camera, but to like talk yeah. to the the new yeah, cast maybe. and be like, that would be cool. Man. Yeah. Advise the the new farmers yeah. over. And that is um, doing like a cameo or giving some advice or something, and maybe even one or two of the girls, like they probably use Cassidy Joe or Sarah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I think they should definitely, if they can, bring Cassidy Joe in for like a cameo. Cause she just, you know, the, the audience all remember Cassidy Joe. I remember right. Cassidy Joe. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but if you look at our thumbnails, like for the video, so yeah. I make the thumbnails for the video to try to get catch people's eye to watch them. Yeah. You, Cassidy Joe, and yeah. I think the Megan and you know, those are the yeah. ones uh, that bring people in. Those are the ones I use because that's what people yeah. were talking about. So. All right. All right, Ryan. Yeah. Thanks yeah. again. All right, brother. Appreciate all it, man. Right, we'll check you later. Yeah. Take care. Josh said, I just don't think you like love. (laughs) (laughs) It's funny because I don't think Josh likes love. That's okay. (laughs) But yeah, Billy was telling me about how the the Gita, how that came about. I mean, what that is, what that means. Yeah. Yeah, and it makes more sense with what we originally started off doing, food reviews and stuff like that. And then when we shifted to the love show, I guess the name doesn't really apply too much to that. But, you know, they were thinking uh, of we already bought it? the sign, Ryan. So it's <laughs> 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 they were- um, oh, man, I'll tell you what had me rolling. Uh, the, this last one you guys did when, when Billy said, um, OK, that's good, Hunter. So I bought a realtor with me. That's <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, it wouldn't have surprised me, you know, the way the way they kind of portrayed her and everything, and like, I mean, she made pretty damn yeah. clear that she wasn't uh, wasn't feeling the the Georgia life there, you know, as far as long term. So, <laughs> man, that I rewind that three or four times. <laughs> <laughs> no, I seriously did. I did have a friend trying to make like a product line, so I got this one little thing that people can put on a, their shirt or back of phone. It's called it's a cartoon of a horse giving away a guy to a girl and the girl asked the horse is he broke <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah and the, the horse has the man lasso oh yeah and, yeah like, kicking the man out you know and the girl's like i don't know if i want him is he broke and uh 